cutting edge guests, awesome, uncensored, jaw dropping information, plus funny memes, good deeds, and loads of laughter. Kind of have it all. Ladies and gentlemen, if your soul is awake, then welcome because you're in the right place. Well, good day to you, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. Welcome to the Sovereign Soul Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Wozni, and we stand for love, levity, and liberty, because after all, the most powerful force in our universes is love. And heck, we all love to laugh, right? So levity is some of the most powerful delivery mechanisms and systems to deliver information, whether it's ancient, current, and quantum, right? My guest that's about to join us on the show is none other than somebody who's been there, done that, who is once again, as we all are, a spiritual being embodying a physical presence in this lifetime. And one of the amazing things about her you're about to meet in a few moments is that she acts as a wonderful medium or go-between between between children and parents and their souls and their starseed families and discussing where they've been, where they've come from, what they're here to do now, and where they're going, both as an individual and us as a collective in the human race. And how cool is that, right? And on top of that, she's also an animal communicator and an incredible spiritual educator. So here's the thing. My purpose in having this show, which I run, it's completely free. We don't even have a paid sponsor. The point of this is helping to share powerful information that can help awaken the planet and uplift our consciousness in humanity here on this new earth in this beautiful Aquarian age at this moment in time. So please, all I ask is a simple favor. If any of this resonates with you, kindly like, subscribe, place a comment, because that helps us share this message incredibly. It helps based on the AI algorithms. We're sharing this as well on channels that are heavy on censorship right now. You've heard of YouTube. This is where it's living. So we may speak in a little bit of code in order to make sure that this interview survives. It's also on Spotify, Podchaser, Pandora, Rumble, and other ones, including BitChute and Gab. So thank you all, first of all, for tuning in. Secondly, I want to share a massive thank you and eternal gratitude from me to all of you who are whistleblowers, digital warriors, citizen soldiers, divine masculine and divine feminine guardians and protectors of our children who are standing up for the sovereignty of all of our souls and basically by leveraging non-compliance and using our gifted voice from source, God, higher power, however you may call it and define it to stand up and fight back and stand for freedom, health freedom, medical freedom, sovereign freedom, and financial. This is how we all continue as a collective common unity community to move forward and no longer have tyranny oppression and suppression in our lives which we still do right now and we are winning this battle and one of the ways to continue to move forward is sharing the light and this brings me to our guest that i am so deeply honored to have on her name is sherry diveband and she is the original founder of Divinely Guided Children. She is the co-founder of Aramis Creative Learning Center. She is a Reiki master, an animal communicator, and an incredible medium. And here to speak to us today, Sherry, about seven dimensional beings reincarnating on earth in our children and star seeds of our time, speaking about the new earth and what we anticipate to come in our collective consciousness can co-create. And in addition to that, talking animals and psychic communication that we have with animals in the natural environment. So girl, thank you so much and (laughs) welcome to the show. Wow. What a introduction. And thank you so much for inviting me on your show. I'm so honored to speak on this topic to as many people that will allow me to speak on this topic who will listen because it's, it's a very important, um, information that needs to get out right now in the collective and and the ascension and and where we are headed within the Aquarian age. So thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. You're most welcome. And I know with our schedules over the last few months and able to to be here, you know, it's, we've created this, it seems like it's actually just worked out with divine timing, really, right? With where we are today and what's going on in the world. Um, I listened to you. And by the way, she's also a mother of, you have three children or two? Mm -hmm. Three, right? Three children. So we're talking about a lion mama, right? A mama bear that 
understands what it takes to raise children in the 21st century, going from 3D to 4D and 5D shift right now, and from the East Coast and in the middle of about to move to a totally new location. So thank you for joining us. And I believe that that's really relevant and pertinent for people to know, Sherry, that you're an entrepreneur, a creator, you're a psychic, a medium, all that that I've also mentioned. And in addition to that, a mother of three with your beautiful husband as well. So take us through, if you don't mind, um, the new earth children that you say that are arriving on this planet right now, and maybe you give some relation to your current children and how you got to be where you are today, doing what you're doing on behalf of all mankind and serving us. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> new earth children. Well, first of all, I didn't invent the term, you know, I'm not the first person to talk about them. Uh, and, you know, and new earth children is really when it comes down to the most simplified explanation is they, these are advanced uh, evolved souls that are coming to this planet that have either been here many times, or they're coming here literally for the first time mm -hmm. to help us move forward because we have got, we have, this planet has become misaligned through a lot of generations of uh, control and manipulation and greed. And, and most people watching this show know why. So we're not going to get into that in this show. But the star seeds or the term star seeds, new earth children, uh, Dolores Cannon has a, a very famous book out there called uh, The Three Waves of Volunteers. And she talks about star seeds yeah. and evolved beings that have come in, but it, it goes beyond Dolores Cannon's three waves of volunteers. I mean, we've had evolved souls coming through this planet, our entire, the, the entire duration that earth has, has been uh, accepting life forms on, on her consciousness and on her, on her beautiful planet, right? Um, back in Lemurian times, you know, a lot of Lemurians are coming back. And so they have been here from for 50 to 60,000 years ago. And they're now coming and circulating back in, into the planet to help us kind of reclaim our sovereignty and our liberation because we've lost that for generations and generations of manipulation and control and bringing us from a five dimensional planet down to a three dimensional planet, people have lost their connection with their soul. And we have these star seeds that are coming in for thousands of years, but in, in a very condensed amount, probably within the last 150 years. And so I started working and knowing about star seeds when I went on my own spiritual journey. Um, and I know in hindsight now, everybody has their journey for a reason. So I used to blame my mom because I moved around a lot as a child and I got bullied a lot. I didn't have a lot of friends and I, and I have a lot of trauma whatever that means to everybody, it's individual, but my trauma, my experience uh, was affected by my upbringing of being moved around a lot. Now I look back and I realize I needed to be in all of these different places of, of, the, of the country to be exposed to different types of people, different walks of life, because it makes me a, a very understanding, uh, patient person for the most part with regard to understanding humanity. You know, I've, I'm very, very open to that. And, you know, I'm a California girl when it comes down to it. I'm from California. I resonate most with California, but I have been moved from Florida to the East Coast, back to California, and I've bounced back and forth, but, but it's made me who I am. And when I started having, when I had my first son, you know, I wasn't exactly planned. I was 23 years old when I had him, just graduated college, not knowing what exactly I was going to do, but I was a registered a uh, nurse for animals at that time, because my upbringing, I was so shy and so scared of people because they were so mean to me. And I had such crazy experiences um, that I became so such a shell of myself, a hermit of myself that I was like, I'm going to dedicate my life to working with animals. And I did that for quite some time. And it wasn't until I had my first son, Jordan, who's now 17, where I was, I, he opened, he cracked this shell of a heart that I had closed up real tight yeah. and he opened it up. And I was like, wow, this is what true love is. I had never experienced it. Even yeah. with my beautiful husband and my amazing parents. And like, there's no love, like the love that you feel towards your child, at least in my opinion, in my experience. And it really just opened me up and I started noticing and becoming more patient for people in their journeys. And, you know, why are there bullies? Why are there mean people out there? Maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe what ha what's their story? Mm -hmm. And I started to really care genuinely about other people uh, in a way that I never did before. You know, everybody was mean and I hate people. And then I was like, oh, I wonder what happened to that person. Why are they, why are they mean? You know, what, what experiences have they been through? And, I, and it changed me as a person. So I, I thank my first son for that because he 
shifted and realigned my, my path. Um, and then I started, I, I got into like Sylvia Brown and I was like, I want to do what she's doing one day. I can't, how can I'm never going to be able to do that. And now I have clients tell me, I wish I could do what you do. And I'm like, you can, I was that person on the couch being like, I want to do what she does. I want to, I want to communicate with spirits and that sort of thing. And so I really immersed myself in my own healing for quite some time between the time I had my first and my second, I had a lot of time on my hands to really be a wonderful mother and be present for him and allow him to heal me and change me with this unconditional love he was giving me. And I, you know, it just really catapulted me. It was the catalyst of, of my spiritual journey. And I just evolved as a human being. And I started reading Dolores Cannon books and I started learning about star seeds. And then I learned that I was an indigo or I am an indigo child. And I learned more about myself. And so it was through through having my own children that I started becoming more exposed to spirituality, energy. I started learning, I uh, learned energy healing first to work with animals, but then I thought, gosh, you know, I could really help pe people. People need energy healing too. And so my 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 journey has taken me in a lot of different directions, and it definitely wasn't a straight path. There's a lot of veering I did and coming back and 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 just reevaluating my circumstances and growing and evolving as a human, which that's what we're here to do. Um, and then when I had my second son, I really dove deep into, OK, I want to I want to have a wellness center. I want to help people. I want to guide people. Um, and then before I got pregnant with my uh, daughter, she came her spirit came to me and introduced herself, said who she was. She was going to come in. She's going to be my daughter. And I was going to help her in her journey. And at the time, you know, I we all know later on when we look back why we're not told the whole story. Because right. if I had been told back then what I would be doing now, I would have been like, uh -uh, I don't want to do it. Nope. Next. You know, anybody else want to do it? You know, yeah. um, but I, I knew it, I knew it was profound and I knew she had a large mission. She taught me a lot about star seeds and she was the one that taught me about the children coming into the planet. And she was the one that taught me about the rainbows, the stars, the crystals, the indigos, and really put it in perspective for me. And I learned so much from her and I started to really work with more. And of course, you know, divine timing, then all of a sudden parents started bringing their children to me and I started working with a, a, a lot of children and I was just, just, oh my God, these yeah. children are incredible. Yeah. Like, where do they come from? I had, you know, and then I started getting the answers to it and, and working with children in my sessions. And it's obviously where I started to where I am now launching a nonprofit and, mm -hmm. and shifting the education system, which we can get into in, in due time, mm -hmm. uh, really was, uh, was just an escalation of, of manifesting what it is that my, my journey really, uh, was, um, really solidified, I believe, when my daughter came in, which is why I think she was the last. I had to be of a certain age. I had to have certain experiences. I had to have a lot of things happen first because by the time she came, it's like, all right, Sherry, you, you thought you were working up until this point. Like, nope, like full steam ahead. Yeah. And it has yeah. been like that since she was born. And it's just this uh, one after another, after another. And here we are now. And I'm like, wow, I, I can't believe all the things that have happened. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I had my first hypnotherapy experience with Dolores Cannon, one of her guides, she had just passed. Uh, and that QHHT, quantum healing hypnotherapy experience really was an eye opener. I mean, even though you're laying there on, on a couch or a bed at that a point in time. So it delved back deeper. And that was, I'd already been a Reiki master by that point in time. So I was very open to it. That also then led me to life between lives. Mm -hmm. When I did my Reiki level one, I had been guided and met a Navajo shaman woman, just amazing. Jan Roney, if she's still out there and shout out to her, just incredible. And she started, she opened me up to the Indigo children. Uh, and that, because the first way that she had ever met me, she said, wow, you're an incredible Indigo, indigo child. I had no freaking idea. I had just started Reiki one going, okay, let's be open to this. Cause this woman, woman's coming to me about to embrace me. And I'm like, mm, you know, kind of like pressing my boundaries, right. My buttons of my social conditioning up until that point in time, yeah. I was open to it. So then I found that really fascinating. And that led me to a lot of things, Esther Hicks asking and it's given and whatnot. Talk to us, if you don't mind about the different children from Indigo to where we are now, what you see in your practice, Sherry, 
are the greatest concentration and where you think we're going to go with the souls that are incarnating in this planet now and over the next few years. And if you don't mind, also qualify that as an impact that that will have on humanity and our consciousness, please. Yeah, great question. So, and you and me, just like you, I had no idea what an indigo was back when I was told that, you know, very long time ago. And I was like, oh, indigo, what's that? Um, but the, the indigos, so if you take what Dolores Cannon spoke about, the first wave are now senior citizens at this point um, in, in their age in, in demographic. And, you know, they struggled the most because they came in in this ascension timeline. So we're talking about this timeline, not other timelines, in this ascension path, in this timeline that we're in. Um, here on Earth, uh, they star seeds started coming in, um, you know, uh, 100 to 150 years ago to about 70, 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they struggled because they did not fit in. They didn't feel like they belonged. A lot of them became hermits. Unfortunately, a lot of them committed suicide and they weren't able. They got into drugs. They they really had a very hard time. She talks about that a lot. And I see that as well in my in my clients that are much older as well. I mean, they really shut down because this world was just not suited for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had, they had the hippie generation where it was the pre indigos where they came in and they were in a higher vibration of love, love. But then again, the drugs that I believe that the dark side introduced drugs to them right. so that they would de become derailed and then they did because it was free love but then it, it kind of shifted into something else mm -hmm. so then they needed a group that was a little bit more uh, the star street group that was a little bit more collected in themselves and a little bit more grounded and that is the indigo the true indigos who whom are 30s to you know maybe late 40s into 50s right now mm -hmm. roughly and, and they are really, they are, we really truly are that pioneer group. We are the ones that are a little bit more grounded, a little bit more like, mm, you're not going to fool me. I'm not going to be tricked by, by your tactics and things like that. We're less likely to be programmed where we always grew up feeling like we were different. We didn't fit in. We weren't, you weren't the, like, I'm, I've never been the type of person that went through uh peer pressure that didn't work on me i'm like no, i'm not gonna do that you know we're not we don't succumb to that we're not uh pushovers but we all are are, are very empathic <clears throat> can be sensitive but driven um you know pretty well rounded indigos are and the indigos are important group because we are the parents of the the next the the next group the third wave that came that that is here now which yeah. are the the star seeds which are even more evolved no. than we are, which is why so many parents are learning and healing through their children. My children teach me more than any book, any prophet, anybody, anybody in the world. I have learned more from these guys than anything. Any, and, and it's because their wisdom is within, you know, we, we, they're, they're not learning what they know. They, it's already there. It yes. comes with their light. It's, it's their moving essence. Outward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the indigos set the stage for the star seeds to so the rest the next groups of star seeds to come in which we call the new earth children so the new earth children are in their 20s and and lower at, how do you say that 20s and less right now and still coming in so the first group after indigos at least this is how aramis presented it to me when she would before she was here <clears throat> that the crystals uh, are the next group and they are the love, like the love bubble group. They are, and, and most of the, my clients, including my son, who's 17, is a T described this way. They are full of love. They don't like confrontation. They're not fighters. They get along with everybody. They are kind. They don't get in trouble. They are just here to remind us of love again. Like, like bring introduce love into our life acceptance kindness compassion no judgment that's what they are but they're 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 the setback for them or what they struggle with is they are highly sensitive so they're very very sensitive they cry really easily they're hurt very easily they don't understand why someone would be mean to them or hurt them it's like it doesn't register in their mind they hear about wars on the tv or bad things and they're like they just, how is that possible to them? Because where they come from, that doesn't exist. Right. Uh, and then we have the star seeds that, I'm sorry, the star group that comes next, which are the very left brain analytical inventors, innovators, you know, the ones that are going to, the movers and shakers, the entrepreneurs in, in our, in our demographic that are really going to help us move forward. The, the crystals open up our heart and remind us of love. 
And then this next group comes in and they're the, they're the inventors of the new world. Like, how are we going to run things? How are things going to bring in new technology, but, but not the, not the bad technology, right. uh, the good leaders, the ones that are, that are kind, they, they can be a little bit more introverted and shy, um, but not all. And then we have the rainbow children that kind of have the qualities of every group I just mentioned, right. and they come in and they just bang it out. They are the leaders of the future, but they're stubborn. And they think that they're they're in the house. They think they know it all because they do. They uh, they're going to run the world, but in a better way. You know, they're not pushovers, but they're kind and compassionate. But they are motivated. They are highly motivated. They will bulldoze their way through any b- obstacles, any boundaries. Yeah. And they're very hard to parent. They're very hard to parent. Hmm. Um, and then we have the indigo. I'm sorry, the divine children who are 2019 up until 23 that are. Uh, their DNA is is already 12 strand activated DNA, pretty crystalline, whereas the other groups, some of them are coming in and shifting. Some of them are coming in already. It's a mixed bag, whereas the divine are already um, 12 to 48, I heard. I yeah, to, yeah, yeah, fifth density yeah. and beyond. Yeah. yeah, fifth density and beyond, very activated in their light body. They can heal instantly. There's they, there's no veil. They don't come in and forget who they are. Uh, they are just, they anchor us. They, we, I call them the anchors. They anchor us in into 5D so that we don't slip back down again. So, you know, I don't like labels. And, and people who've heard me interview, they're going to say, oh, Sherry hates labels. And, and what I mean by that is I don't like negative labels. I don't like the ADHD, the Asperger's, the limiting labels are not, I'm not okay with. But when, when we need to categorize characteristics of personality in an uplifting way, I'll use star, crystal, indigo, because it helps people understand why are these people this way? Why do they have these characteristics and what makes them unique? What are their strengths so we can build upon it? Whereas I believe Asperger's and ADHD, these other ones are limiting labels where it places children in a box that is not for their benefit and it doesn't help them work uh, work out their strengths and their positives. It puts them down. So the labels that I give in my book is really a more of a tool or a guideline to help parents and humanity understand. They're not lazy. They're not Generation X and Millennials. They're not lazy. They don't want to work. They just don't want to work within our system. It doesn't fit them anymore. So they're trying to break boundaries and create new things. That's why we have so many entrepreneurs right now, the young ones that are trying to start a business at 10, 12, 15 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're they're out there. They're, they're forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. One of the ways, that, one of the things that comes to my mind as an analogy is you have these divine souls that are incarnating into these three dimensional bodies, carbon, some crystal, almost crystalline and all that various, and they're attempting to fit into it kind of like a jumpsuit, you know, something that's ill-fitting where they've come here to this planet at this time and they're not quite fitting and they're kind of wrestling and fighting against it. And then you have these parents who are looking at it and saying, this suit this fits you just fine. Why don't you follow the old system or our ways, right? And that that's what I see is also out of alignment. And then in addition to that, um, I will speak on this on the allopathic side, those labels have been generated so that there can be a pharmacological profiteering system that has been set up in order to demonize these type of children and put them back into an education system that you know, is either going to be unsupportive, well, for the most part, in my opinion, unsupportive of their growth. And in addition to that, I believe that that side knows what has been coming, whether it's Project Looking Glass or just by virtue of our souls and our incarnation path in different timelines, and has worked to stimmy that, if not stave it off, to have these amazing light beings come to this planet at this time. Um, No, we're not going to get into politics here. There is one example that you had that I heard you interviewed on a program was amazing. If you don't mind, when a parent brought one of these children to you and you and that soul spoke to you about being from the seventh dimension. For those that are listening or watching us right now, Sherry, and don't understand the multiple scales of dimensions, would you mind just enlightening us to that from your perspective and also share as much as you can with about that experience and i just found it truly inspirational i shared that interview with everybody that i could yeah uh dimensions is a whole other show that we could talk for a Mm -hmm. long time it's really complicated but the 
easiest way I can explain it to people is the, the space remains the same, but what you can see and what you feel shifts. So, you know, we could have a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and beyond dimension within the same now space in the same quantum field, but what you can see shifts, which is why children can see, let's say uh, a fairy Mm -hmm. or a unicorn or an angel in a higher dimensional field because they're at a frequency that they can now step beyond. It's almost like think about a l- levels of a of a of a of a building. Yeah. You know, they can peek into another floor. Mm-hmm. So these floors, it has to do with what frequency you're in, whether or not you're able to have access to it. That's mm-hmm. why people say there, there's heaven on earth. It's just in a higher dimensional field. Yeah. What that means is, you know, this is a perfect example. Okay where we are with the ascension for people who are still very in 3d Mm -hmm. and those that are not and in a different experience what does that look like okay so for me despite the fact that just i'm human like everyone else and i'm trying to sell a home and buy a home and this stressful and so many stresses and moving kids across uh, to uh, state lines and worrying about the pets and this and and the normal work and you know like the million things that can stress me out right I am at, I try to maintain myself at a frequency that regardless of all of that, like when I think life is beautiful and I'm not afraid and I have no worries and I'm like, we have faith, everything's going to be fine. And I, and I don't even care about watching the news because my, I'm so forward thinking of, it doesn't matter to me because the world that I'm creating, the reality that, that I'm in is not suited to that. So everybody's up, all up in arms about a recent thing that happened in politics, which we're not going to talk about. And I'm like, what, why are you focusing on that? Like in my world, it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. in the bigger picture. It does, but it doesn't really matter because I'm in, I'm tapping into a higher dimensional field. I could see beyond the density that everyone else is that, that is stuck in three third dimension is trapped in so it's all about your frequency and what you have access to so these children and it's hard it's very challenging for these children to come in from a higher dimensional field in a higher density body a higher density consciousness i mean um to to fit themselves into that suit because it's really restricting i mean i had a session uh recently with a girl who was used to being in a light body Mm. like she has she's like a 11th dimensional being doesn't even have a body anymore and volunteered to come back. She's Arcturian, of course, volunteered to come back to earth to help with the Ascension. Mm -hmm. And she is having the hardest time. She won't even walk. She's a year and a half, refuses to walk. She has to be carried around. She's seeing, they have her in physical therapy. I'm like, just leave her alone. Imagine coming into this planet with, with the ability to fly and go anywhere you want, interdimensionally, intergalactically. And then you're in this meat heavy soup that feels probably like a thousand pound elephant. And you're like this tiny thing trying to like, imagine how hard that must be. Like they have to acclimate and, and figure it out. So there's a lot, there's a lot to it, you know, to, to, but to simplify it, I think that's the easiest way to explain it. It's all about your frequency and what you have access to. As, as far as the dimensions go. So I'm, I've, I did several interviews. So I'm not totally sure which one you're talking about, but I think you're talking yeah. about the um, boy from Alpha Centauri, um, Eden. Yeah, I'm from Alpha. My, I found with my QHHT that I'm from Alpha Centauri B. And this was a seventh dimensional being, being who 100 years of training to come yeah. to okay. Yeah, that, I, I see so many, so it's hard for me to remember, but I think no that, worries, no worries. But, sure but, the point is, but I, there's a lot of them though. Yeah. Uh, that there's there's this new earth collective, and it's also called New Earth Alliance. Yeah. Um, they've used it interchangeably, but it's it's stationed on Alpha Centauri where they invite souls that are coming into earth for the first time. It's almost like a school, it helps them prepare to be in a human body, and it can take them like this one example. I think you're talking about this 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 uh soul took a hundred years mm-hmm. to prepare to come into this life because it was his first time, and they need to understand what it is to be like in a human body, but also in a third dimensional reality. Like, I'm sure it's really hard for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, and then come in with the veil, you know, in this veil of forgetfulness and all of these other things and demon spirits that they're not used to seeing. I mean, it's a big adjustment for, for these children. And I, and so Eden, um, in, in the physical form here is a three or four year old boy who is nonverbal. Mm-hmm. And his mom was just worried about whether or not she was doing the right thing because she couldn't really communicate with him. And I got a very long message from his channeled message from his higher self, wh- whom I communicated with. And that's when he told me he's part of the New Earth Collective. 
a uh, seventh dimensional being. He's here to help raise the vibration of the planet and various things that he was supposed to do in his journey, which I didn't share all of that with the public. Mm -hmm. But the point is he was trying to let us know that this is a real thing, that there are star seeds coming to the planet from Andromeda, Pleiades, Sirius, all over the place uh, to help us evolve because those, why are they coming from different places? I get the question a lot. So right. why do we need them from everywhere? Because these, these beings have information and knowledge that is pertinent and relevant to our ascension mm -hmm. that maybe they have that they can like no one is coming into this planet right now unless they have information that's useful so there's no reincarnation happening right now where souls are like oh let's 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 have fun and go to earth no that's not happening we are in a strict you know regimen of souls coming in that are at a certain density and a certain consciousness that can contribute they're not here to learn and that's the thing about new earth children they're not here to learn they are here to help, to guide, to teach, to anchor, to bring light, to open the consciousness of humanity and awaken, awaken us. And I think that, that the message from Eden and Alpha Centauri was a profound one so that it really, truly affected a lot of people who watched that video that I channeled that message that they were like, oh, my gosh, yeah. you know, it really resonated with them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I quite enjoyed that one. Very much so. Yeah. And I'm not to say bias. I don't like that label as a bias, but, you know, finding out from where my soul originally incarnated and started in Alpha Centauri B and that there's this station school, as you uh, put out at Alpha Centauri. I mean, I'm just like, wow, this just resonates. This is amazing. I got that, this amazing, like a wonderful dizziness, you know, like you're standing in a uh, vortex in Sedona or some of the other energetic sacred sites in the world. That's what I got it was just this like warm, wonderful feeling I come across that. Um, to that point, what about the souls that uh, they may be activating more of their strands of DNA and they've been here for, you know, 10, 12, 16 years. And I'm going to share without say, saying the name that one of my loved ones has a 16 year old daughter and in the last two years, there's been elements where all of a sudden she's not herself and she's channeling. We actually had to have this discussion about five days ago because something happened that kind of freaked them out. And she started saying stuff that was completely out of origin, completely out of character and was not her voice and uh, nothing you know, evil. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll let the audience know, but very, very different in delivering these like powerful, potent messages. Have you heard about anything of that? And if so, what can you share with people if their children are starting to do this or even just friends of theirs in their young 20s? Yeah, no, I've seen a lot of this. Yeah. And it can be quite disconcerting and worrisome. Yeah. I can't tell you how many emails from parents that are in panic mode emailing me. It's an emergency. I have to talk to you. And, yeah. and it's like, calm down. It's okay. You know, and, and as long as it's not a dark entity, like you said, like as long as she's not being harmed, she's not acting not of herself or himself, if it's a boy yeah. um, in a bad way or dissociating or harmful behavior, that sort of thing. Um, what's happening uh, is so many amazing things are happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of the teen group, I, I say, I, I feel for the teen group right now, the teens and young 20s, they're struggling the most. And I've talked about this for about over a year now. Right. They are true. Really, the indigos aren't the pioneers. It's that group because they're the ones that are here to to be like, uh, -uh I don't like the new. I don't like the job system. I don't I don't like the educate. I'm not going to go into college. Mm -hmm. I don't want any no jobs appeal to me. They are the ones that are going to help collapse the system. Mm -hmm. And then they are also the group that's going to help rebuild it. And that's a really tricky place to be in. So a lot of them have come in with their inactivated purposely because they wanted it. They needed, not wanted, but they truly needed to have that authentic human experience. And then when the time clicker went off for that individual person is different for everybody. Yeah. They reached a certain age or certain maturity level or certain place that they, that the family, maybe the family needed to move someplace. There's always a reason for everything. Yeah. Uh, then their DNA starts to activate. And they start to get more light of their soul's essence comes through. A lot of them work with soul groups where they are working with a council of three, five, seven, sometimes 12, sometimes more. And so what's happening with her likely is that she reached that ticking point where the, the timer went off and now she's activated. And it's really it's disconcerting to those around to watch. And she probably doesn't even understand it, but she is pulling information through from her council of guides that are 
giving her information that is necessary for whomever is listening. Uh, maybe right now it's just you and maybe they're just getting her, uh, what's the word? Like they're practicing, they're getting her warmed up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then th that information, next thing you know, is going to end up in books or, or on, in lectures and in workshops. Perhaps her and I will collaborate, yeah. connect, I mean, on some level. But yeah. this is happening wide, I mean, far and wide. And I have, I work with children in, all over the world yes. in most countries and it's happening everywhere. And they could be three years old. Yeah speaking light language to, to the mm -hmm. corner of the room and the parents are freaking out like who is my child talking to in light right. language and to what you just mentioned where they just start channeling or or it's it's not in such a way that it's clearly not their voice but it's them but they're they're just coming out with these amazing wisdom filled uh communication where their mom's like where did that wait where did that come from did you watch something on on the tv and they're like no mommy and they just say point like very confidently, very point, matter of fact to uh, an interdimensional being in the room that no one else can see, but obviously they can right. to uh, to children just all of a sudden channeling information. And it does what I was trying to say is it's not always them uh, changing their tone where it's clear it's not them. It's actually them speaking, but the wisdom that comes out of them is mm -hmm. comes out of left field to the parents because mm -hmm. they've never heard their child talk that way. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a parent the other day uh, whom their three-year-old son just randomly with a very, very clear was like, you know, we all live in heaven. This is an illusion. And, you know, where do these children get these things? Uh -huh. yeah. You know, they, they know they'll tell their parents, I know this is my, this is our third life together. We died in a car crash, but that's not going to happen this time. Like you, I need to write a separate book just on some of the things that I have learned through my sessions with parents and the things that children have said to them because they're not children. We got to get out of this hierarchy. And that's what this world is based yes. on. And yes. that is our biggest challenge. Thank We're in a hierarchy based society and we have to get out. It's like, you know, respect your elders, the older you are, the more knowledge you have. And yes, to some degree, that is true. But when we when we put children down, and we put adults up on a pedestal, they're not being hurt. They're, they're continuously over generations being told, you know, you know, that's not true, or stop making that up, or where did that come from? And we're devaluing, or we're, we're not val validating, or whatever the word is, I'm trying to come up with, where we're not allowing them to be their authentic self and give us information that is actually accurate because you know we're the adult and they're they're the children and we got to get away from the the children don't know the children right now probably know more than most adults do they just don't have a way of articulating it they don't have the vocabulary they don't have the life experience to quite explain it but I, but their consciousness right. has all the information that we need and it's starting to come out in small spurts like you're mentioning where it just comes out of nowhere that's amazing truly amazing how yeah. about animals as an animal communicator too what what are you getting from animals what are they teaching us and is the same cycle of incarnation happening of souls of animals from different planets and different densities happening now or we are they going through the reincarnation cycle of, of lesson and learning which you said has been shut off for humanity yeah, I animals are our fifth density and higher, and they are evolved beings. So they have a lot to teach us. Um, so we have oversoul groups like uh, big herds of animals don't typically have individualized souls that come in to have that particular experience. It's an oversoul, but the ones that um, typically come in for our guidance and our healing are going to be the pets, the domesticated animals. Hmm. Uh, so our cats and dogs and our birds and, and those that, that are in our home, uh, they generally know us. So they are being souls that we have had lifetimes before with. Um, some of them are um, even more involved than we are, and they are really here to teach us and, and, and to help us heal right now. The pets in the home help us heal. You know, the cats uh, work interdimensionally, so they're not really like man's best friend. Most cats are not going to be like lovey-dovey, although my cat is the most loving cat in the world. But typically cats, felines, are hurt. Yeah. they herd away the dark spirits. They are protectors of the interdimensional realm, and they take that, take that very serious, which is why they sleep a lot, because they're doing a lot of things astrally. But when they mm -hmm. come on you and they want to knead, I call it knead the dough, and they want to knead you and, and lay on you and yeah. rub up against you and purr, they emit a frequency that is healing. And they know what they're doing. And when they do it randomly, it's because they notice that their, their person 
is off and they come and they they rebalance you they recalibrate you dogs are more earthbound and they truly are man's best friend they are here to be our individual companions but also family and they heard off like the physical realm so they're going to they know that they're here to protect us so they don't quite know what to do with so that's why when dogs see spirits they start barking and freaking out because they don't quite know what to do with them right. whereas a cat will like chase that thing out of the room so animals are important and and, and they're an important part of our life and they are not really here to learn necessarily so they're here to help with the ascension to help us evolve. So they're not here to learn big lessons, but they are here to help guide us. And, you know, the reason why we have a lot of species that are no longer with us is by choice of that species. That oversoul chose to stop coming in because of the fact that they were being poached or, uh, you know, neg negative things happening to them. But they chose to stop coming in because they said, I've had enough of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the good news is, as we go to the ascension and in, into 50 to 100 years from now, I've been told that a lot of those animals will likely choose to come back and they will be thriving. Um, that once we'll, that we thought were once eliminated or will come back. Uh, but the animals play a significant role. And what they're here to answer your question, what they're here to teach us on a larger scale, mm -hmm. which is why I shifted my learning centers to incorporating more animals, mm -hmm. is that they are here to help us reestablish the human animal bond because it's to so off course, yeah. so off course. And they're here to teach us again, there's no hierarchy of the of the of the you know man on top and then we have the the structure the whatever they call that um evolutionary ladder is what they call yes it. yes uh, you know we need to make it like a circle like an all-inclusive bubble right. that we all contribute right. and they're here to teach us compassion and empathy and respect of all creatures and we are not at the top of the food train and we don't rule this planet um anymore and, and they're here to teach us that and they're they want me specifically and and oh, those others others that are within the educational platform mm -hmm. to teach the children to reteach the children the right way from young age uh, and incorporate animals into their learning uh you know let them be out in the field and maybe do some math with the horses yeah. uh maybe they go out and walks with nature with the with the dogs and they're learning about science you know like let the animals teach let them listen through their heart space and and their third eye and see beyond the veil and let the let that wolf behind you talk to the child and yeah. teach them a lesson plan that day so it's the animals have a lot to contribute to this ascension and i believe that the children are going to do really well when they when they um combine the education component and the love of nature and in, in a more in a more profound way than we've ever seen before so it, it's going to be really great Wow. Uh, you know, thank you for sharing that as well. Sherry, this is the first I've heard somebody put forth that animal, like cats and dogs are fifth dimension coming in and incarnating here for an experience with you, as opposed to, you know, first dimension lighting, lightning to a mineral rock to a second dimension might be a tree and they're on their evolutionary ladder of scale to get up to becoming a human. So it's just wonderful to feel that uh, collective cooperation of souls of we're all here in a symbiotic relationship to share experience and evolve together. And, you know, just the mouse or the bird and the hummingbird outside your window actually may be a more evolved soul on the timeline than you. And just by it chose to be a hummingbird to, to flutter in and just share joy because that's the spiritual sign of a hummingbird. And yeah. in my, my work, go ahead. If you have something to add to that. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. That's nice to be agreeable. Um, and in addition, in my work with uh, horses and Reiki and working with rescue horses, I have found some of the most profound teaching or excuse me, lessons that I've learned through observing animals that have unfortunately been abused, just as we've seen with children too, uh, has happened and still happening at a level and the resiliency of the spirit in that animal, if they have had uh, lost a leg, I'm not going to go into any of the, those particular physical glory details, yet you can see the reawakening of the spirit in that animal and that it will eventually learn in many circumstances or allow itself to come back to trusting humans again, to allowing children to ride on its back and take them around the ring. And they may not be going and doing the Kentucky Derby 
And so I find that really fascinating because I'm learning through their experience and even in communicating with them, there are times where I will leave and feel very depleted from the energy that I've shared and not to say, maybe I didn't protect myself at that point in time, or there was something for me to learn or vice versa. I have seen horses heal people in one to two sessions, you know, people that have had some very traumatic things in their life or might be at a stage level of stage three of something. And I don't want to drop the name here because of the mass tech censorship. And that person all of a sudden may go to the doctor in a few weeks or a few months later. And they're like, you know what? We've tested you. You're fine. But you're seeing that horse yawn. You're seeing them work on their chakras and they have that incredible capability. So thank you for sharing the fact that they're all here for. I haven't heard anybody else say that and it's been an innate belief and you said it and thank you you know yeah wonderful yeah wonderful i'd like to add i would like to add one thing too it's it's it's, the, it's taking it one step further too mm -hmm. you know our these animals are not here for our enjoyment and the children are here to show us that so we're so i i don't plan to have horses in my learning centers uh that just perform you know, it's not a circus show. Like I need, the children need to understand to ask permission. You know, does this horse even want to be ridden today? Yeah. You, what do you ask them in your mind, connect with them energetically. What do you get? Or what oh, of these things that of all these fruits and vegetables, what do you think the horse might want to eat today? Mm -hmm. You know, like we need to create a, a mutual respect and to yeah. teach children that the animals are not here for our enjoyment and our entertainment. And, and teach them how to connect in a much more profound way um, because we've lost that and mo unfortunately movies um, and society has depicted that, that, you know, like I went on a trail uh, in, in Texas. I went to visit my dad, real quick story, um, a couple months ago. And we went on a, wanted to take the children on a trail ride with the horses yeah. uh, just to get my children used to being around horses because we will be. And uh, I was worried about my daughter, but she did incredible. Oh my gosh, she was like just one with this horse. Yeah. But but I, on the trail, these horses kept wanting to like veer off and chew, uh, eat the plants, you know. And then they they kept telling them to correct this behavior now. Tell them no, they they don't they don't need to eat that. They eat plenty of food. Don't worry, keep going. And I and I was connecting to the horse, and I was like this poor horse eats hay and grain every single day. Yeah. Do you think how many opportunities does he get, get to graze on all these alternative options that he probably yeah. like, intuitively knows he needs. He needs his biome and, and the minerals from it. Exactly. And he's yeah. being told not to by these selfish humans riding them for entertainment. And I was like, this right. is not, and I, I was like, this isn't right. Like let the horse graze. I'm okay if he stops on our trail ride to take a moment to, to nice, get some nourishment, yeah. but they were just like, and I, I just, this is so wrong. So yeah. again, you have trail rides, great, but the people need to be understanding that, like, let's let the horse graze a little bit, you yeah. know, like we're not that important, mm -hmm. you know, we got to knock our egos down a little bit. And it's, yeah. it's about, it's about balance. I'm big about, I'm always big on balance. Mm -hmm. And I try to teach my children that I'm not better than anybody watching this. And I look at my daughter, you're not better than anybody, but we're all equal. That's where we need to get. Like we're all important. We're all equal. Uh, you know, even even the even the animals, especially the animals, in my opinion. So definitely. Yeah. Definitely with you. And to that point that you've just made about interacting with animals and having that relationship with them that, hey, if we're in partnership, are you willing to do this to, together with me now? or later, we learn that in horsemanship. So in the clinics that I have uh, done, I've taken, not been giving, um, from Arizona to Colorado to British Columbia, you know, the, the energetic horsemanship clinics are the, you, the, first of all, the horse chooses you, you know, so you go through who do I align with and which one will choose you. And then at every juncture and every point in energetic horsemanship, it is, this is my intention. This is what I'd like to get out of our time together here today. Are you on board with that and vice versa? And what do you need? Right. And we see that whether it's Hidalgo, which is a Hollywood movie where we see that true story, uh, reenacted true story of uh, Viggo Mortensen um, taking that Mustang across the Ar Arabian desert. And he's asking the horse in a way, there's that energetic horsemanship aspect. But again, it's talking. It's not exactly intuitive feeling, but at least that's a Hollywood one that kind of resonates and is starting to get there. Um, so thank you for sharing that as well. 
I would like to discuss your learning center that you were mentioning because the institutions and that another is just another word that f- when folks learn the Latin behind what an institution means, like the word government, government is the la- comes from the Latin verbs as I've shared on many shows, Sherry, uh, to governus mentis, which is mind control, governus mentis, right? Control mind, excuse me. So there's mind control. That's mm-hmm. what the meaning of government is. Truly, that's its Latin roots. Same as an institution, right? And these systems being torn down, collapsing, so we can create a new. One of those is what you're doing with your learning center. Would you mind sharing that with everybody? And actually, I'll put up one of the websites that you have right here of Aramis Creative Learning so that people can understand that there's hope if you're not aware that these are coming and you already have one of these online with some amazing practitioners too. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, what, what I'm trying to create is exactly what the mission statement says there. It's a holistic and alternative approach to learning uh, where children come first. I mean, that's, that's simply what it is. I mean, I have a much longer wellness uh, mission statement below it, but in essence, that's what I'm trying to create. The children, I mean, if you look at the word school, uh, it, it is in essence a, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's a, it's a program. It's a, it's a curse that every time you say it, the children are going into these facilities and being indoctrinated and programmed Mm -hmm. and they're not learning at their own creative ability. Um, They're limited and they're being forced to learn a certain amount of things that the government uh, is manipulating them to learn so that they go into the system and then they work their whole life. And, and, and you know how that goes. It's all in preparation for that. So Aramis Creative Learning Center, inspired by my daughter, which is why we call it Aramis um, to begin with, our air, I call it the Aramis Initiative. The Aramis Initiative is about allowing children to learn in a platform where they thrive uh, and because it's very holistic and it's self-driven. So uh, imagine, a, imagine a class, imagine a education system, which we, we call it a center, right. where children can go and decide what they want to learn. So there is an a la carte classroom setup, class setup, where children pick their classes for the week. You know, maybe they do art all week and then the next week they decide they want to do some science. Uh, we do it in a way that it's real life for late ability. So if you're doing, uh, if you're learning about ant- photography, you could see there where, where we incorporate right. animals to it. Um, you know, math is a big one. Kids don't, if they hear the word math, they don't want to take a math class unless they are like the, you know, the math minds, which there are children who love math, but a lot don't. So we do mindfulness math. So it's all about relate. It's real life relatability. We try to, we're trying to teach children in a way that they understand why they're learning it. And in a way that's fun because fun should be number one and learning should be second. And that's, that's our philosophy. So the children get to learn the things that they should be learning in class that that adults are coming to me trying to learn, you know, mindfulness, um, energy, uh, you know, numerology, astrology, astronomy, all of these things we should be taught in school. How do you manage your strong emotions? Um, What about tat-a-tat? You know, how to mindful breathe, how to use your body, how to connect with the earth, how to connect with crystals. Um, what all of this means, um, you know, frequency healing and music, uh, you know, it's, it, these are things that should be, should be taught in our schools and, and they're not. And so what I'm trying to create is an alternative education platform that is right now only virtual. It's for about a year and a half. We launched it about a year and a half ago and we started in one time zone with like five teachers. And now we're about to enter our third time zone and we have over 25 teachers, 30 teachers. Wow. And so it's, it's, it's huge and it's off, it's available to children all over the world. And it's very reasonable. This is not a money grab. It's very inexpensive. Yeah. Our I teachers, mean, our teachers are heavily, yeah. Amazing. The teachers are heavily screened uh, because it's about a frequency. I have to, I, I interview every teacher and they have to, I have to resonate with them and their vision. And we're, we're working to open the first physical location in Florida, West Palm Beach, which is where I'm moving in a couple of weeks. And we'll have the first learning center that will incorporate horses and, and uh, some other animals awesome. um, and outside outdoor learning. And everything is a la carte. The children choose what they want to learn. There are children that are actually going to teach 
their own classes. So children will teach other children, very organic, very holistic out in the field, learning how to garden, learning how to sew, learning how to cook. Uh, we are going to learn the, the, the math and the reading, but it's going to be fun for them. You know, they're going to take to learn writing. We'll do a creative writing class. You can learn to write your own book. You know, the children will be excited to do that. We don't have grades, no letter grades because there's no competition. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also there is also no grade as far as age. So it's developmental groups. Um, it's, it's, it's the future of education and I, I'm excited for it. And our vision is to grow every year to open new centers so that they're all over, not only, not only all over the United States, but international, um, everywhere, as many as Aramis learning centers we can open, awesome. we're going to open them yeah. and it's going to be an all, and not everybody's going to jive with this, Brad. And that's okay with me. I, I, it's okay if people don't like what I'm creating and trust me, many people have told me how they feel about it mm -hmm. and that's fine. I just want a choice. I just want there to be a choice. And for those children that are struggling in this world and feeling like they're different, I want them to have a place to go that they feel safe. They feel comfortable. They're not labeled. There will be no labels used in my, my center. It's right. not acceptable and not allowed. Um, and we will get to know children on an energetic level. We have, we'll have healing and wellness centers within each center. They can get biofeedback. They can lay on bio mats if their tummy hurts. Uh, you know, there's no traditional scary nurse. Uh, you know, this is just the way, the, the future of, of the children's education movement. And I'm excited to be a part of this. Uh, and so Aramis Learning Center, uh, you know, it's just the beginning. We also have Sky Universal. That is the virtual reality platform that we're going to launch later this year. So children all over the world can go and have immersive experiences in a safe way, you know, uh, Greek mythology will be one of our first classes where the kids get to go into Athens and learn about Greek gods in a very immersive experience. Then they can go under the sea. They could go on Mars. I mean, just it's the, the, the possibilities are absolutely endless. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I absolutely love it. And every show, Sherry, and it's aramiscollective.com is one website. And then we can go to aramiscreativelearningcenter.com is the other. That'll be here in the show description. We're going to come back to that here in just a few moments. Every show, share some funny memes and get the guest reactions. Um, so I've also, and sometimes videos, sometimes videos. So I want to get to your reaction on um, this one, just as a meme right now hilarious for anybody who's out there happening right now. What do you think? <laughs> Don't even get me started on this subject. Like <laughs> I literally can't even stand it. I mean, it's still happening. Uh -huh. uh, can I just tell you something? I was at the pool, the public pool the other day, and there was a woman. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not joking in the pool, yeah. Yeah. in the pool, swimming yeah. with a mask on in, in the, in the water mask swimming. I, I, I don't, to me, like, I don't understand. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I, I'm just in an alternate reality. So that, right. that one speaks to me heavily. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. And I believe that this is something that's very right on point with the theme of removing the institutions, recreating a system, you know, for the new earth, the new children, and exactly what you're right on point with you know, whether it is the new learning through, let's go to Mars, let's go swim and check out, uh, swim through Atlantis, go back to Lemuria or check out Greece or just get online with some people, you know, the power of but stepping you know away. The simplicity mm -hmm. of this meme is, 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 is on point. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes the, the star seats coming in to show us an alternative way. That's it. They just yep. turn, they're, they're shifting our attention someplace else. And they're like, Hey, why don't we look at this? Why don't we try it this way? Yep. That's all it takes. And the message for any parents that are listening, or if you're an aunt or an uncle and you have nephews, nieces, or other children around, or you're an educator right now, and there's children that are attempting to ask you questions and share something with you, keep an open mind. You know, I think it, it like Martin Luther King has stood up there. If you don't have an open mind, then you're shut down. Then there's no way that you're going to grow and evolve. And I, myself, like you share, we know many people that have high IQs on the intellectual spectrum, PhDs, MDs, you know, MBA this after their name, but their emotional intelligence is extremely small. 
Yet on those high IQs, we've seen a lot of those people go, I know best because I've went through this system, this process, and nobody mm -hmm. can tell me any different. And, um, and there's no, no way for change or evolution to happen if you believe that you know all of those answers. Uh, I'm going to share with you, uh, you know what, this is a video, and I think this is just a great way to end it on the memes, the videos as well to yeah. share right now. Before we go back to your website, I have one or two more questions, and then uh, then we're, we're good for time, and we'll let you uh, move on because you've got to pack up and move a house here, for oh, yeah. example. This is what I believe all children should be allowed to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she owns it. They all do that, right? They just know. They just know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so I just give credit where it's due. That's by Adley White 20 on Rumble. Posted this from a TikTok channel. Anyways, kids are just naturally happy. They're born altruistic. They're born with these amazing gifts. We all are. And then they can start getting shut down by certain social conditioning or pharmacological conditioning and whatnot. So my message is everybody stay open-minded, you know, shepherd them, move them forward because they are here to serve us moving forward. And without the new age of children, then we don't have a civilization left. Um, any final comments on that? And I'm going to pull up Aramis Collective here while we chat. Yeah, absolutely. My biggest recommendation or advice to, to parents is stop trying to mold your children into the same mold you were brought up in. And, and, and we cannot, we can no longer say, well, my dad did it and my, my grandparents did it. Uh, or we've been doing this for generations because the part, the process of star seeds coming into this planet right now is to shift the paradigm, to break things down, to, right. to call our attention in another direction. And the more the parents resist and the more they say, well, no, I'm right. I'm the adult. Then the longer it's going to take us, to be sitting here having these conversations and, and movement is not going to, it, we're not going to be able to move forward. So listen to our, listen to the children because they'll surprise you on some of the things that they have to say, some of the ideas that they have that we've never thought of that are quite profound mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity, get, hold the space for them to thrive because they will not surprise us. And that's why with the Aramis Collective, I like, I like to use those three star comments mm -hmm. because I feel like they're coming in hot. And they're coming in with a lot of light and a lot of love. And we need to clear the way yeah. and let them do what they came here to do. Uh, so don't stand in their way. You know, let's let them, let's let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Provide a supportive and fertile en environment for their growth and their evolution. And as a result of that, that's just a wonderful, you know, hand in hand relationship that goes, whether you're a parent, whether you're a middle-aged teen and you've got other children that you're around, everybody's here to share amazing gifts with each other. Aramis Collective is run on donations. So you can go to thearamiscollective.com to the donations. You can see that here on the screen. Again, all these links will be posted in after the interview on all of these websites um, and continue to raise funds. So you've got phase one, phase two of the growth uh, to get moving forward here. Why don't you just talk about the fundraising that's needed right now in case any of our listeners are affiliated with or have some, you know, uh, some change rattling around in their pockets because we all do, you know, in cryptocurrency <laughs> speaking. Yeah. Yes. So the fundraising is for several aspects. One is to get the physical location going and we show what we need the money for and what the phases are for. So phase one, we need to purchase land in Florida. Phase two is getting the construction going. Um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Phase three is uh, getting the equipment and supplies and everything we need. Uh, phase four, we'll, we'll be incorporating the animals as the final step before we open uh, the money. So all of the money goes um, into the collective uh, nonprofit that we that we open. But we also use the donations for our uh, divinely guided children's um, uh, cartoon animated series. We just released the 13th video, oh, which is my favorite great. Special to me because it was a birthday present to my son Skylar, who is yeah. one of the characters in the in the show because he's obsessed with Greek mythology, and yeah. so we did a whole video on Greek gods and in his honor. So uh, that's that's our favorite one. So the videos help fund those animated videos. We also have four 
children's books out. It helps us to keep those going. So the money goes um, to 100% goes to the children uh, education fund in some way, whether it's the videos or for the physical center or to help us pay teachers, keep the website going. Beautiful, beautiful. And I also have Divinely Guided Children series or Divinely Guided Children Media uh, web up here on YouTube, the YouTube channel. This one actually is on the six animated short video about chakras and animals. So just amazing way for kids to tap into it, the younger generations to understand more about themselves as they're sharing with us all the divine gifts that they've incarnated here to help propel us forward in this beautiful new earth. Sherry, just awesome. As we end it right now, what would be the one or two things that you would like to leave as a message for anybody watching this interview or listening to it as they're driving in their car or working out? Yeah, good, good question. My biggest advice to people right now in in the environment, politically, emotionally, physically, mentally that we're in right now, that we find ourselves in this now moment, in this ascension period, is to go within people i highly encourage everyone watching this to go within find the answers within yourself connect to your higher self and you do that by just kind of creating boundaries from the chaos stop watching all of the stuff on the tv that they purposely put there to keep our attention to keep us heated and aggravated and in fear and in anger mode stop engaging break the cycle i call it getting out of the loop get yourself out of the loop because once you get out of it you have a different perspective and you start to realize holy you know crap i was in that <laughs> and it, and it was a bunch of bs and now i can see things from a different perspective yeah. it's all about raising your vibration by going within doing things that bring you joy going out in nature nature creating boundaries and the people that are toxic in your life you have to make that tough choice you know i always tell people it's not by forever. It's by for right now. So if you have a toxic brother, you're not saying goodbye forever. You're just saying, I need my space for right now. Right. You know, you're, you're not kicking people out of your life permanently, but you're choosing and your intention is to surround yourself with those like-minded people that are in resonance of yourself. Take care of yourself, your children, your animals. Focus on the future that you want. Manifest it energetically by visualizing it and and holding your power and saying, this is what I want. This is what I no longer consent to anything less. Mm -hmm. Anything that's of my highest good, I welcome into my life. And that's what we focus. If we all did that collectively at the same time, our ascension would go a lot smoother and a lot more quickly, but we have too many people dabbling in the low vibrational fields and, and are not cho- are choosing not to come out. Um, and it starts with each individual person. Everybody makes a difference right now. Well, Bob Marley, his quote is, if you live for yourself, you live in vain, but if you live for others, you'll live again. And that live again is not what I take as a reincarnation. That is a living again in terms of a massive growth in spirituality. And so to your point as well for uplifting your vibration, one of the ways is to share this interview with others. And like JFK said, the greatest heroism is the service of truth. Please do share these truths with everybody. Thank you very much, Sherry. And for being on here, thank you for everything that you do. You're uh, just an amazing entrepreneur and light worker for the planet. You're like a modern day Joan of Arc for us in our time and helping bring this information out to the world and literally saving these children and helping carve this path for the ascension of our entire race and all of our species. Folks, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Brad Wozniak, your host. Please like, share, subscribe, enable notifications on this, and drop us a comment. Let us know what memes that you like and anything in the comments as well for our guest and how amazing she is in moving forward. Thank you all. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, evening. Thank you, boys and girls, too, for tuning in. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on the program, ladies and gentlemen. Please like, follow, subscribe, share this with nine friends and family. And of course, if you enjoy our blinged Buddha firing red pills from his nine mil, let us know.